Let us pray. Gracious Father, from the rising of the sun to the very setting of it, we want to praise your name. This is a precious time. This is a holy moment for all of us to begin this day in your presence. So, Father, we pray that you will bless all of us so that we may begin this day with you in our hearts, with you in our family, with you in our workplaces. Holy Spirit, guide me as I deliver your message. Holy Spirit, bless me as I deliver your message. Holy Spirit, bring our hearts together as we worship. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The hymn that we'd like to sing together is entitled, A Little Bit of Love. A Little Bit of Love. Do you know the world is dying for a little bit of love everywhere we hear the sighing for a little bit of love for the love that rights are wrong fills the heart with hope and song they have waited oh so long for a little bit of love, for a little bit of love, for a little bit of love, they have waited oh so long, for a little bit of love, from the poor every city, for a little bit of love, hands are reaching out in pity. For a little bit of love, some have burdens hard to bear, some have sorrow we should share. Shall they falter and despair? For a little bit of love, for a little bit of love, for a little bit of love, shall they falter and despair? For a little bit of love, down before their idols falling. For a little bit of love, many souls and they are calling. For a little bit of love, if they die in sin and shame, someone surely is to blame for not going in his name. With a little bit of love, with a little bit of love, with a little bit of love, for not going in his name, with a little bit of love, while the souls of men are dying. For a little bit of love, while the children too are crying. For a little bit of love, stand no longer hardly by. You can help them if you try. Go then sing, here am I. With a little bit of love, with a little bit of love, with a little bit of love, go 
Father saying, Here am I with a little bit of love. Amen. Our text is taken from Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 through chapter 3, verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But thanks be to God, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of knowledge of him everywhere. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are an aroma that brings death, to the other an aroma that brings life. And who is equal to such a task? Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity, as those sent from God. Are we beginning to command ourselves again? Or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such confidence we have through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Amen. In this text, Paul is presenting three images or metaphors of Christian life. The three metaphors are captives, or slaves, aroma, and letter. But every image, as you see in the text, God-centered. Paul cites the name of God five times in verses 14 through 17. What Paul is implying is this. He affirms that God is behind everything, and everything is from God and to God. Nothing is possible outside God's sovereign care. The first image you see in this text is slaves or captives, as NIV translates it. Verse 14, But thanks be to God, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession. Now, by procession, Paul clearly has in mind the Roman practice of triumphal processions celebrating victory, in which a Roman general was the focus of attention. The victor is clothed purple garment with the palm branches embroidered on it. This was well known in Paul's time, so it was a familiar and strong word picture. But Paul says, we are like those slaves. Why? What is he speaking of? The procession included a gaggle of prisoners on their way to death at the hands of their conquerors. What Paul has in his mind is this. We are just like those captives or slaves in the sense that we were in enemy's territory one time because we were enslaved to sin. But Jesus came and he rescued us and he set us free from enemy's hands. And Paul is inviting everyone to contemplate a procession that includes his fellow missionaries, his fellow believers as well, and himself as captives or prisoners. God has organized and directed those victorious processions. So we could be now part of that victory procession. You notice he says, always in that verse. That means its ongoing nature of parade. 
In other words, wherever the Lord leads us, there is a victory, and victory is guaranteed. Paul is saying wherever and whenever he did his own ministry, God became victorious. He felt God's leading. He felt God's provisions. And because of what God has done through Jesus Christ, we are part of that victory procession as well. Not only that, do you know where that procession ended in ancient times for the captives? In the big arena, where the general himself, the victor himself, was crowned with honor and prizes. But to those captives, that wasn't the case. Do you know what happened to those captives? They were doomed to be killed. But here, what Paul is saying is this. We are like those captives. We are like those prisoners. But instead of being doomed to condemnation and judgment, although we were enslaved to sin, because we have been rescued by Jesus Christ, now we are no longer under condemnation. We will be celebrating with the victor, with the general. For those who put their faith in Jesus Christ, the victor, for those who walk by faith and not by sight, are already in the victory procession. And instead of going to the graveyard, we are headed to heavenly arena. And this seems so clear when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9, where it says, For it seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession, like those condemned to die in the arena. We have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels as well as to human beings. So this procession metaphor is symbolic. Symbolic of what Christ has done. Victory over sin and death. And he has conquered your life and my life. I am no longer in enemy's territory. Just like Paul was. We were taken by God at the moment of his call and our call. And that we have embraced the life of faith. We have been rescued from the eternal separation, the consequences of sin and rebellion, when we have been brought into the kingdom of his beloved son, Jesus Christ. The life of gospel is following Jesus Christ. Jesus not as an example so much, but Jesus as a conqueror, as someone who is victorious always, so that we may be victorious as well. Let us not be surprised when our Christian life is not too dazzling or enjoyable at the moment. You may be feeling like captives and prisoners at times, but let us remember, still and yet, nevertheless, that's the best place to be, just like the captives in the victory procession because that's the place that is most comforting and most safe for all of us. Because ironically, that procession will lead us to dazzling destiny in the end. So today, I want to give you a couple of prayer items. Number one, let us pray that we will all have the submissive spirit, like a slave, like a prisoner, we are led by God in relationship with Jesus Christ. And that posture is so important for all of us. We may be successful in our business, but without God's leading us, our life is not successful. So let us begin this day with a sense of humility, a sense of prayer. God, please lead me. I'm your captive. I'm your prisoner. Please lead my life. Second prayer request. We are either life-giving person or the other kind, as the following passage says. Our life today and our day today may be acceptable to God or not. 
So let us pray that our life itself will be a blessing to other people today. And let us find our comfort in the fact that it is not me who is leading everything, but it is our sovereign Lord who is victorious already, who is victorious today, who will be victorious tomorrow, who will be victorious always, as the uh, verse says, and will simply follow his lead today. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I pray that you will bless every single person in our congregation and that our life will be led by you, our business will be led by you, our family life will be led by you, our school life will be led by you, Lord. So, Father, we commit our life to you this morning and help us to follow your lead today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.